Now this is a follow-up to the video that I had the other day of really trying to be a predator in the tree stand. And yeah, I talked about all the different aspects of that and uh, how I believe that you can't get away with hardly any movement at all. And especially today when I see a lot of hunters online and the way they're using specific types of tree stands or on the Outdoor Channel, Sportsman Channel, boy, people move so much. And this isn't a fantasy land state. This is not, you know, suburban area, whitetails where deer, you're shooting a deer and someone's playing basketball, you know, in the next yard. You can't get away with any kind of movement. And that all boils back down to me. I have hunted from a sitting position since the late 80s. And it is the number one way that you should be hunting. And I'm going to discuss one of the number one tactics and how you should be hunting, how you should be a predator. I'm going to talk about that in the end and as it relates to this. And, um, and you need to stay tuned to the end, even fast forward, because that truly is really learn to soak in the woods, become a part of the woods. And I'm going to talk about a certain aspect of that at the end of this that you need to apply this hunting season if you are not already. Sitting down is critical. There are many reasons why you should sit down to shoot and sit down to hunt when it comes to whitetails. And I believe if you learn to sit down and you learn to shoot sitting down, that you'll become a really a much better predator and you'll be allowed to blend into the woods much more efficiently. And here are a lot of reasons why. For one, when you're sitting down, so much less movement to actually get the shot off. Now, if you see right here, and I know Dylan has a lot of footage, I've sat like this with my bow, literally in this position since the uh, late 80s when I had a PSE fire flight. I, would, I believe that would have been 1988. And now that was a 42 inch, I believe, axle to axle. So that, that axle of that and that cam came up about this high. Literally, I would sit like this in that position with my glove over the top and just zone out, which we'll talk about in a little bit here. But by doing that, I was locked into that position and I would actually take naps that way and it'd prop me up there. So the cam, the lower cams on the platform, I always use a quiver and especially with these Matthews quivers, I use a height that sticks the quiver a little bit above the riser and I'm using shorter arrows. The arrows are not touching the, uh, the uh, floor and on the uh, bottom of the stand, the, the steel of stand, our family tradition stands we use. And so they're well off the floor of the stand and I sit like this. I sit with my bow leaning back like this, arrow on, and it's all ready to go. This is a bad way to sit. And it doesn't matter if you're standing or whatever you're doing. If you have your bow hanging down like this, they used to have hangers like that, where you'd actually hang your bow from your, from your uh, waist on the string with a hanger on your belt and it'd be pointed down. This movement right here, not acceptable in the deer woods. That right there, I don't care if you only lose 20% of the bucks that come. I honestly can't remember the last buck that I actually spooked that I wanted to shoot. It's been decades. It might've been since the early 2000s or 90s, late 80s. I can't honestly remember because when you go to shoot, you want it to be just a slow whisper in the woods to where a deer doesn't even know that you're there and you're moving very little to let them know you are there. And when you are letting them know that you're there, it's when you're sending an arrow through them or you're lifting up your gun. So I sit with my bow like this and you can look, I can hit that different ways. It's not going to come out. And uh, I usually have my foot in front of it. Um, we have the really good welded on foot rests on the family traditions. So the bow can't slide out on that either. I'm not using uh, channel aluminum platforms because then, of course, I can't stick my cam like on this. I'm usually using those steel mesh platforms like at the family tradition stands. But I'm leaning it just like this. And therefore, that is always, that wrist is right there. And I simply just have to bring it up. Now, I like hang-on stands or, or hangers for my bow because I like putting that bow right in front of my face. That's even better. Not every circumstance, not every tree do I have a hanger in. I'm really disappointed when I'm using a climber or I'm out on public land and I don't have that because then my hands aren't free and, uh, and it makes it a lot harder to actually get in your pack if it's an all-day sit or whatever you might want to do. I like that hanging in front of my face as opposed to between my legs. But regardless, I want that bow vertical right in front of me and very little movement to actually pick up the bow slightly and get a shot. And because I'm sitting down, I can easily, if you have a quiet stand, you have your back to the tree, 
can easily turn to the left and shoot, easily turn to your right and shoot, which I had to this year with my buck. I saw him at 15 yards. He's coming quartering towards me when I first saw him, and I had to actually spin on my chair to the right, get a shot when he was six or seven yards away broadside. He went about 50 yards and piled up, but he didn't know I was there. It was only about 18 feet off the ground, and he was right course quarters. He was actually uphill from me a little bit, so probably only 14, 15 feet below my position. And, uh, and you know, if you're, if you're in the wrong position for that, um, you're not gonna get that shot off. But if you're sitting down, so easy to turn to the right and turn to the left. Now one thing, when I'm sitting down like this, so much less movement overall than standing. What do you do when you stand? So a lot of people will say, well, I put my stand on the back side of the tree that I think the deer are coming from. Really bad move. Because then you have to look around and if you have to face the tree and stand there all day, that's even worse. At some point you get old like me, I just turned 50 and older. I know there's a lot of bow hunters that are watching this channel that are in their 60s, 70s, and maybe even in the 80s, which I would, that's awesome. But um, if you're standing, you're gonna have to shift your weight. It's just natural. You're gonna look around a lot more because you can pivot on your feet a lot easier. And it puts you in a position where you're gonna spook a lot more deer if you have to stand there the entire time. Very, very common. And so standing, and bow hunting to me does not go hand in hand. Now also when you're standing, something to think about. I believe you are gonna move a lot more. You're not in a comfortable position. You can't really blend in too well. And think about it, to a deer, what do you think is more terrifying than the figure of a man? Whether they're on the ground, whether you're in the tree, whether you're out in the field, the figure of a human being is, has got to be terrifying to a deer, especially when they sneak up behind you or from the side and they see you you're 20 feet in the tree and they're 100 yards away, you might as well be two feet off the ground. There's really not much of a difference with that angle. And so if they pick you out as a standing person and that figure, and I believe deer are extremely adept at picking out movement. They see color or black and white, they see shades, but most importantly, I think they actually pick out movement more than anything. And if you're standing and you're in that position, that has got to be extremely terrifying to a whitetail. And that won't, even, that won't only ruin your current hunt if they see you and they pick you out of that stand and they see you move as a figure of a man, they're, that, they're gonna remember that for a week or two or three weeks, whatever it is. Maybe not even the figure, they just remember a stress point when they come into that location. I, I believe bells and whistles go off in their head as danger, danger, danger. I believe their heart rate picks up. They just remember something was bad in that area and they avoid that area probably before they even get there. When you're sitting down, are you a broken branch up in the tree? Are you another trunk? Are your branch sticking off to the side? You blend into the trunk a lot better. Even if it's in just a small skinny tree and you're just sitting up there, the figure of a man standing is gonna be much more powerful than a person sitting down. You think about it, when deer are seeing you in the woods, most of the time it's when you're walking, when you're standing, when you're hiking, whatever you're doing, and they really pick that out. But if you're just sitting and not moving, a great tactic to actually blend into the woods. And when it comes to blending in, when you're sitting there, just like I used to do when I put my hand over the cam and leaned in like this, you just zone out. And so you're sitting there and you can kind of keep your eyes down and you're really just sitting there motionless. Someone mentioned that they don't like the use of the phone, um, the cell phone, because they're always looking at it. And I imagine I'm thinking that they're standing, they're getting it out and they're looking at it. But if you have your phone and use a little heat pack like I do, um, hand warmer tube, or on the Fanatic, the Sitka Fanatic series, they have the built-in hand warmer tube. And they have a zipper right in the top, whether it's the hand muff or the jacket. So I can slide my phone in and out with about this much movement. If you imagine this is at my waist, I'm taking my phone out, phone's right here. I'm just taking that out just like this. I'm reaching in and I'm just looking down like this. I already have my head there, I can put it right back. You can lift your eyes up, so little movement. If a deer is picking you off at this, that means they're right in front of you 30, 40 yards, and they saw this little bit of movement coming out. Um, there's other concerns uh, besides the phone. The phone actually keeps me quiet because it keeps my head down. I look at the phone, I've written articles on the phone, I publish YouTube videos on the phone. Resp I've responded to thousands of comments, I'm sure, on the phone during the hunting season on social media. And it keeps my head down and it keeps me from not moving. So not a bad thing to have that phone in the woods. Now finally, what I was talking about, staying to the end of this, you really should be hunting with your ears more than your eyes. And that's, to me, a tried and true, 
you know, to me, a very advanced hunting method is that you're hunting with your ears and not your eyes. And I have to, I have to admit, you know, when, when I'm taking those first sits in the first part of the year and you hear a squirrel behind you, how many of us jerk your head right away? It takes a little while to get in the zone. But to me, hunting with your ears, sitting down, and just really keeping your head down like this, learn to hunt with your ears. You can close your eyes. It's more of a Zen moment. You're really just focusing in. You're becoming part of the woods. And you can really hear when nature is changing around you, whether it's a squirrel, the movements of a squirrel, the squawk of a blue jay, those dang little red squirrels that are always chirping, birds taking off, deer running by, other critters in the woods, a coyote coming by, all of those you should be able to hear with your ears and really, really notice that as opposed to having to look around at everything. And that's where even if a deer sneaks up behind you and you don't hear it, it's, coming, it's going to come past you in the front. And so you're really worried about your shooting lane on your right, your shooting lane on your left. If you hear something coming, you're just sitting very still. The moment you go like this, you're spooking them. The moment you go this way, if they're coming up behind you, you're spooking them. So you can just sit just like this and let them pass. And if you, feel, if you hear them walking away from you, you can move very slowly, look over your right or left shoulder and see them. If you need to shoot, you let them go past you. Make sure you're outside of that window where their head's facing straight away from you. And if you have a quiet stand and you have to stand up, you can stand and do so. But really when it boils down to is that you're gonna be a lot more successful hunter if you learn to sit shooting down, if you learn to hunt sitting down, and if you learn to use your ears while you're sitting down, instead of jerking your head around, standing up, looking around. And I believe a lot of deer are spooked because people are actually standing in the stands and they're moving around too much. It makes you want to move around too much. But boy, you should rarely, rarely smook a matured buck come, when it comes in. And I'm saying, you know, it'd be one thing if you're spooking them every 10 years. It's another thing if you're spooking them every year. Something has to change. And as far as practicing and shooting down, or sitting, sitting down when you shoot, that doesn't take much at all. You just do that for everyone. You know, there's a lot of people telling you it's difficult to do that, but it really, really is not. Um, very easy to shoot sitting down. What's not easy when you're shoot, sitting down is if your draw length's too long. So imagine trying to sit on this chair, my draw length's too long, which means I need to bend my waist, I need to lean back. I'm becoming a lot more tippy on this chair. But if my, sh if my draw length is appropriate and my, sh my uh, shoulders are square and my back is square and vertical, not leaning, then I'm in control right here. I can easily bend over and shoot below, I can shoot out. We have a lot of shots where we're in tree stands, we're actually shooting uphill because of the elevation change. But very easy to do that if your draw length's not too long, it just takes a little bit of practice. And what you'll find is even in a sitting position, I like, I have my legs spread out on the stand, I'm sitting down, and so to me that's three points of contact, your rear end, your two feet, and sometimes you even have your back right here on, against the tree where you can have a very solid rest while you're, a, while you're aiming. You know, another thing, you know, when you're standing and you're leaning out to take a shot, I see some of this online where people have, you know, they either have their safety line on or whatever they're doing, but they're leaning out, standing, taking a shot again. It's just this leaning figure of a man hanging out from a tree and you're not going to be able to blend in. So learn to shoot sitting down and won't take that long there's some huge benefits that it plays when it comes to the woods keeping you quiet keeping you motionless able to detect things around you get into that zen time where you're actually just relaxing you're listening and you know that deer are approaching you're becoming a part of the woods not an obtrusive intruder in the woods you're actually blending in and I think you're gonna blend in, and I've experienced over the decades, you know, going back to the mid 80s, that by sitting down, it's given me almost every opportunity at a mature buck that's walked by. Now I can't say, I can honestly say I've missed <laughs> a few times. I've blown it for things like that, but, um, but a really high success rate of not spooking deer. And if you think about, uh, I'll, this comes with a warning, um, if you're gonna sit with your stand like this, your bow like this in your stand and you're sitting um, there is that potential of knocking your bow over and I can say out of the and I don't know how many times I've sat um, you know bow hunting but imagine that I'm I'm sitting let's say 50 times on average um, 
since the uh, mid 80s so whatever that adds up to currently and sometime in 96 I, ha I was sitting on a lock on lem uh, stand I don't understand I don't know if you remember that it had a plastic base with a thin layer of carpet and I was hunting on that stand and I was in a giant cottonwood down in river bottom near Cass City Michigan and I accidentally and I was high I was I think I was 28 feet up in that which I don't hunt that high anymore but I accidentally had my bow fall out of the tree. I had an HHA sight, it was a very thick one, uh, machined aluminum, and that was the only thing that, that actually was damaged on my bow, the sight actually bent. And so I ended up using it for many years after it bent. Um, it actually bent that, uh, it was so tough that it didn't break. But um, that's the one time out of all these sits that I've had that, you know, I've actually lost my bow out of the tree. So. Uh, there is that danger out that I'll, so if sitting like this with your bow between your legs does come with a warning. But um, if you have a uh, metal grating uh, type platform, then uh, it, it's not going to slip as much if you put your foot in it. If you have a welded on toe rust or foot rest, some kind of foot rest, it's going to keep it from sliding. But learn to, learn to sit when you're hunting, uh, when you're bow hunting. I think it's a must. Only stand when you have to, and I believe you'll be a lot more successful this fall and beyond.